Start. Before we begin, a big thank you to Grimes Developers for giving me an early copy of their game for the purposes of review, and for being super cool about letting me review this game however I see fit. Really appreciate that. You love to see it. Now, without further ado, or legal mumbo jumbo, let's get into it. Crime. An indie game developed and distributed by Cloverbyte, Acupara Games, and Team Malignant, Grime seeks to fill the void, pun intended, that every Dark Souls and Metroidvania player has in their cold, stony heart. Not an easy task, and one that many a game has attempted and failed. But Grime isn't like other games, as I'm sure you may have noticed from the character design alone. Today, we're going to go over what works, what doesn't, and what caught my eye as I played through this rockstone brawler. First things first. Grime is self-described as a fast and unforgiving 2.5D action-adventure RPG where you crush your foes with living weapons that can change form while you use them, all the while consuming enemy remains with a black hole to strengthen your character. Parry incoming attacks seamlessly swap between your weapons mid-combat and consume all in your path to gain unique game-changing abilities all the while customizing your character through a skill tree system in hopes that you may just stand a chance against the game's menacing and ferocious bosses. So that's how the back of the box reads, but how does it hold up in practice? Actually, really well. Fans of the genre will immediately notice the usual staples. Stamina, hotbars, souls, you know the ones. Players will find themselves exploring vast caverns, using abilities gained throughout the game to continue further and further into the world. So yeah, definitely scratching that Metroidvania itch. The story is ambiguous, but given to you slowly over time, through item descriptions and NPC dialogue. You play as a black hole, given form from the shattered pieces of stone around you. Those around you seem to think you a higher being, a thing of perfection in comparison to their malformed, broken bodies. Some will revere you, others hate. And still others question your very existence, wondering if you aren't something different entirely. Whatever's going on here is not as straightforward as it seems, and the only thing we know with absolute certainty is that we are compelled to go higher, to return, to become. Consider me hooked. Grime's gameplay loop is one as old as time, but that's not a bad thing. As the saying goes, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Players will find themselves exploring the caverns around them, searching for items, equipment, hidden areas, safe points, and map stations. Interacting with and running around the game world feels rewarding, and each hidden area and weapon you find brings that familiar feeling of satisfaction. But what about the other half of the coin? Well, combat in Grime is certainly its own beast. There's no regenerating health pots to rely on, so each and every fight becomes a struggle to avoid damage while dishing it out in return. However, that's not to say you can't regain your health between save points. Using the black hole on your head, timing a parry against enemy attacks will result in dealing large amounts of damage as you absorb pieces of their bodies sometimes outright destroying them. Doing this also gains you some of their breath, or life essence, shown by this orange bar here. Fill this guy up all the way and you can use it to regenerate about 80% of your health bar. As to the combat itself, it feels pretty good. The parry window feels fair, and enemy attacks are varied enough that you won't get bored of absorbing attacks, which is good because it can heavily influence your playstyle if you use it properly. The weapons you find throughout the world are all different from one another as well. Each one has a unique moveset, and they're all different enough from one another that you don't feel like you're just getting a new sword with a slightly different strong attack. I'll admit, I was initially put off, mainly because I was expecting weapon combos that flowed together. The first weapons you receive, the axe and the daggers, have three hit combos that then pause before you can begin again. This didn't feel great, because as I mentioned earlier, I like my weapons to flow smoothly, allowing me to get in, wail on an enemy, and then get out again. But thankfully, my fears were unwarranted, as later on I found the fisticuff weapons, which do exactly that. Also worth noting, I didn't have to go too far into the game to find it. The game gives out several weapon types in the first hour or two of gameplay, guaranteeing that you'll find something that fits your build and playstyle sooner rather than later. Like combos? Grab you some fists. Like hard hits? Here, have a screaming mace. More of a ranged guy yourself? This sword shoots fingers across the screen with every swing. Hell, given the abilities that you'll gain throughout the game, you could probably beat this game with just the parry skill alone, but don't quote me on that. Also, I call dibs on that challenge run. Go get your own. Whatever your poison, make sure you like drinking it. The enemies of this game are all pretty unique, with each one bringing its own style of combat to the scene. Get unlucky enough to encounter several different types all at once, and you'd better know the ins and outs of your weapon's abilities. But once you get into that rhythm, whoo baby do you dance across the screen. This translates over to bosses as well. Each one brings a unique challenge. Some of them require you to be aware of what's happening on both sides of the arena, 
while others have a simpler premise, but hit a lot harder. Knowing your weapon's capabilities, and knowing when to slam on the attack button or to get out of town quick, will help you overcome these larger foes. That said, they never felt unfair to fight. I died to each one a time or five, but it always felt like it was my fault, and the runs back to the boss arenas are nice and short. Thumbs up all around. What about armor? Well, weirdly enough, there is armor, but it's all cosmetic. Putting on this badass ice set doesn't net you any defense boosts or resistances, but it does make you pretty cool. Boo! 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 You suck! This does mean that you can fashion stones it up to your heart's content, though, without worrying whether or not your build is optimal, which is nice, if I'm being honest. Too many protagonists end up looking like they've just gotten into a fight with their laundry machine and lost. Moving on to character development, there's two main systems that you'll be focusing on. You've got your typical stat selection, health, stamina, strength, dexterity, and resonance, which is, uh, I mean, I want to summarize it as magic, but it affects your black hole powers and your weirder weapon types, like the finger sword. Let's just call it magic. You take all the pebbles and rocks you've been collecting from your enemies, known as mass, and jam those suckers into these points. Weapons do have stat requirements and scale with these as well, so be prepared to spread your mass around quite a bit in order to test out all the weapons. The second system is the skill tree here. Unlike other games where you unlock skills as you go, this one requires that you absorb enough of a type of enemy before you can learn a new skill. Absorb enough of these enemies, and bam, you can now learn the ability. But it's not as simple as that. Defeating larger or more difficult enemies around the world will give you hunt points, which are the required currency to actually select any of these skills. You can pick the ones you like and, if you've got the materials, unpick skills in favor of newer ones if they favor your build more. Some skills even have multiple levels, so get to hunting. I liked this system quite a bit. It made me really consider what I valued in my character since hunt points felt somewhat scarce. I think that's a good thing though. These abilities all feel really significant and being able to take all of them would trivialize the game. Again, thumbs up all around here too. One minor hiccup I encountered though. When you die, and you will die, the trek back can sometimes cover a significant distance. There are plenty of shortcuts, but it always felt like I died right on the verge of unlocking one. So I had to travel all the way back around to try again. That said, after dying two or three times to the same enemy, I realized I was wasting a lot of time fighting all the enemies on the way back, and once I decided killing them was less important than unlocking the shortcut, I started to breeze right through the levels. And let me tell you, sprinting through these levels feels pretty good once you get a feel for it. Speedrunners are going to have a ball with this game. It should be noted that you don't lose your mass when you die, but you do lose at least half of your momentum meter here, which goes up every time you defeat an enemy and goes down if you ever get hit. The momentum you build actually increases the amount of mass you get from each enemy, up to 100%, so you can increase the strength of your build even faster if you're playing well. All in all, I really like the way the mechanics and grind play out. There's definitely room for replayability here as well. There's plenty of weapons to try out, and combining them with particular skills is going to have you coming back for more. The world of grime is undoubtedly beautiful. The 2.5D look of it goes rather well with the gameplay helping to accent secret areas to players with keen eyes, while literally and figuratively giving more depth to the enemies and colorful characters that you'll meet along the way. The voice acting definitely fits the setting as well, with all of the NPCs making strange and garbled noises rather than speaking an actual language. In regards to the writing, it's really well done. The NPCs feel satisfying to talk to, each with their own personality and motivations, and interacting with each of them had me questioning what my actual role in everything was since each one seems to view you, and your purpose, differently. I never felt overwhelmed with information or backstory either, and if you're the kind of person who wants that sort of thing, I can say with certainty that lorehounds like you are going to have a good time piecing everything together. It's there if you want it, but sits quietly in the background if you don't. And the music. My god, the music. I'd be lying if I said I didn't get pumped up every time a boss fight started. This score is perfect. It's the right amount of epic without being overbearing, and the individual tracks feel unique and distinguishable from each other. The sound effects and ambiance of the world around you feels hand-picked, and you can tell that some real love went into this soundtrack. As for the character designs, well, you've been watching the video. All of them are unique and interesting to look at, both alien and familiar at the same time. One look at an enemy and you can probably guess what to expect from them which is vitally important to the game feel. The world itself is also well designed, filled with strange vistas and watchful corridors. That said, my one complaint is that I started to get a little tired of exploring nothing but caverns. 
It's related to the lore and setting, so I won't ding it too much, but I did find myself giving a sigh of relief any time I made my way out of the poorly lit caves and tunnels. But then I'd stumble into rooms like this, and my intrigue would come roaring back. I don't know, maybe I'm just a difficult customer. I'm not a huge fan of caves to begin with, so the fact that I enjoyed this game as much as I did says something. So, let's talk business. Grime is actually available for purchase, well, now. Currently, the game is available on Steam and Stadia, and costs $24.99 US. No news on whether or not the game will be coming to other platforms, but I'm sure the devs will release more information about that in the future. If you want to keep up to date with Grime and any announcements the developers dish out, you can find them on their Discord and Twitter. Links will be in the description. Grime is a solid game that does a lot of things right. The mechanics feel good, the atmosphere is amazing, if somewhat repetitive at times, and overall I found that my time with this game flew by in the best way possible. There were a few minor technical issues I found while playing, like briefly not being able to look up or down when I changed my controls, and a weird sound effect glitch where the sound effect continued after I died, but nothing game breaking. I couldn't reproduce either of these bugs either, and the devs have been actively fixing all of the bugs throughout the game's development as well, so I'm sure these minor problems will get ironed out quickly. Overall, I'm excited to say that I really enjoyed Grime, and if this video has inspired you at all to give it a try, I'd say go for it. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a parry-only run to research.